shout it out one more time. I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. That's real simple, right there. Can you help me declare it over your life? Say, I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. In my life, you do great. Expecting, sing it. I'm expecting great things. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
Hallelujah. And we're going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Hallelujah. Are you expecting great things this evening? Glory to God. I know I am. Amen. The Bible tells us that God daily loads us with benefits. Amen. And so my expectation is always out there. Why? Because we got a God who loves us. He's a God of surprises. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he's a God of surprises. Amen. And so get your expectation out there. Amen. Come on in. Amen. Come on. Begin to like. Begin to share. Amen. Begin to invite. Just tap that little at sign in the com uh, comment section and begin to invite your friends, your family, your loved ones, amen. Even invite your enemies, amen. Amen. Invite your frenemies. Glory to God. They need to hear the word of, Lord, of the Lord as well. Glory to God. And I'm excited about Jesus. How about you? Amen. Amen. Good to see everyone coming on in. Glory to God. Good to see you, Minister Sellers. Good to see you, Sister Mac. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Minister Delaware, Shauna Delaware. Glory to God. Come on in. That's it. That's it. All the RP. I see y'all. Come on in. Amen. Amen. Let the saints know that the apostle is on. Glory to God. We've been sharing some exciting things, amen, concerning the, the Spirit of God or what He is ushering us into, amen, amen. We're in a glorious time as it relates to the body of Christ, as it relates to the church, amen. I know a lot of things are going on, amen, a lot of things are happening in this world, amen, but guess what? The church is right there in the middle of it, and God, more than anything, God is right there in the middle of it, amen. There is nothing beyond God's power. There is nothing beyond God's ability. There is nothing beyond God's wisdom. Nothing is too hard for God. Uh, is God in control as it, it relates to the power? Amen. Nothing is beyond his control or his power. Is God controlling things? Absolutely not. Not in this world. Amen. He's giving it over to us. Amen. As the body of Christ. And we have a responsibility. Amen. To set in order those things that are out of order. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So I got some exciting things I want to share tonight. Exciting word. Amen. That, that's going to continue to move our faith in the right direction. Amen. Faith has to be focused. Amen. Faith is a, is a power beyond this world. Amen. Matter of fact, the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world. That word vi victory means this is the means, amen, that overcomes the world. This mean, amen, that God has given us, amen, is victorious, amen. It guarantees victory if we'll use it and if we'll focus it right, amen. So we have to focus our faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit has been doing, amen. He's charged us, amen, to teach on this, to share this, to begin to establish in our lives, amen, seven pillars that we will need Beginning this year, amen, the first part of this year, which we, we're about to finish up this first quarter, amen, glory to God, amen, I'm telling you, we need to establish these seven pillars in our life, amen, so every day, uh, seven days a week, we've been meditating the scriptures been on, on these seven pillars, amen, glory to God, good to see you, Sister Williams, amen, come on in, amen, hey, look, we got to establish these things in our life, not just as a subject, amen, glory to God, but as the re relationship and a character of God, amen, God said, son, I need you to tell the people they are going to need these things in these last days, we're living in the last of the last days. Paul told Timothy, perilous times should come. And with these perilous times, these are hard to deal with times. That word perilous means hard to deal with and even dangerous times. Amen. Glory to God. I'm telling you, this thing is about to end. And glory to God, we got to be equipped and ready. Amen. Glorified. Amen. Jesus is shining up his bride. Amen. He's glorifying his body. Amen. He's sorting things out. Who's real, who's not, what's real in your life, what's not. God is extracting those things. Glory to God. There's a pruning going on, as it were. Amen. Glory to God. Whether, whether we're producing or not, we still get pruned. Amen. Amen. Some get cut off, some get cut away. Amen. But it depends on you and your faith. Amen. If you're going to be intentional, amen, by growing in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So these seven pillars, as we get ready to get into the word tonight, continue to invite and come on in. Amen. As we get in the word tonight, we talked about seven pillars. This is our seventh one. We talked about the fear of God, the faith of God, the favor of God, the fire of God the flow of God, the finances of God, and lastly, the force of God. Amen. The force of God is the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Alicia. Amen. The power of God, the force of God is the power of God. And all seven of these 
pillars as God called them. These anointings must be established in our life if we're going to make it, if we're going to survive, if we're going to overcome. Amen. The will of God is not automatic. Amen. We got to learn to uh, activate it. We got to learn to execute and amen, and even pray in place. Amen. The will of God that's going to be established on earth. It won't happen automatically. He needs us. He told us even to pray. Amen. Concerning the will of God being established on earth. And so there are different ways God wants his will to be established. And I'm telling you now, we got to hone in on these seven pillars. So without further ado, let's get in the word. Let's pray. Father, we bless your name tonight. We give you glory. We give you all the honor. Give all the praise that's due unto you. You're almighty God. And there is none like you. Lord God, we could search all over. We'll never find no one like you. No one can fathom your greatness. No one can fathom your power. No one can fathom your goodness. God, no one can fathom your faithfulness. God, even when we are faithless, God, you abide faithful. You are reliable, God. And we say thank you. Thank you that we can always turn to you. We can always trust you. We can always run to you, Lord God. Even in the shaking times that we're experiencing now, God, you're unshakable. Your word is unshakable. Your spirit is unshakable. And God, you're working in us to do, both to do will and do of your good pleasure. So we will be unshakable. And God, for that, we say thank you. Thank you for keeping us today. Thank you for watching over us today. Thank you for the activity of our limbs. God, we pray even now tonight, God, as we stand to, to proclaim your word, that your power, your, your dunamis, God, and your Zeusa, God, Exusia, God, will go forth, God, through this live stream and this broadcast, Lord, whether it's today or next year, God, people of God and those who are lost will receive the grace on this word to shift their lives for the better. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we thank you and we praise you. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's talk about the force of God tonight. Amen. Let's get in the word tonight. Go with me, if you will, to 2 Samuel. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 33. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 33. Again, as we've been talking about these seven pillars, you got to look at this. The pill, What is a pillar? A pillar is a, a person or a thing regarded as reliably uh, providing essential support essential support for something amen and god is establishing his pillars you know when you build when you build a church or you build a a, a a high rise or whatever it is amen you 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 of course you start with the foundation but then you have to establish those pillars in that framework of that building or that structure amen pillars that will be a uh, support amen if you study any kind of beams or, or, or ironwork, you understand there are certain beams on, on a major structure, amen, that cannot be replaced, cannot be moved because they are support beams or they're pillars, amen. They hold the structure together, amen. And so this year, amen. As we move in to move further into this decade, this year is all about building, rebuilding, amen, and building back, amen. That's what God told us, amen. This year is about building, rebuilding, and building back, amen. Some people say, well, isn't building and rebuilding, building back and rebuilding the same thing? Absolutely not. According to how the Holy Spirit told me, he says, of course, we're going to build things that are new, amen. We're going to rebuild things that were good. Watch this. They were good, but they didn't have the right support. I'm talking about the body of Christ and things that we've established both as in the church, the body of Christ, as well as in our personal lives. Amen. They, they, were, they were built right other than the structure. In the structure, the pillars, amen, were not established. And then we're going to build, build back, amen, glory to God, those things, amen, glory to God, that need those pillars, amen. But the rebuild, we're going to rebuild the same thing. Glory to God. Watch this. We're going to build the same thing, but yet better. We're going to build back, but we're building back better. And so God says it's going to take the structure. So God is watching to see how we build. Amen. See, the church has been so far off, 
Amen. And God is shifting. God is changing these things because revelation is coming forward. But the church has been so off because we've been indoctrinated with religion. And even when we get wisdom and revelation of the word, we still don't interpret it fully as God would have it. Amen. He's not giving us wisdom. He's not giving us revelation. He's not giving us understanding just to know. Amen. It's what we do with it. And that building has to, that building plan has to fit in his plan. Can you say amen? And so he wants to establish these pillars, these support structures. Amen. As we rebuild our life, as we rebuild the family. Amen. You know, the family uh, itself. Amen. It's an institution of God, but it's been all disarrayed be renamed, redefined, uh, don't even look like, amen, the family that God instituted. And God wants to correct that. Can you say amen? And so there's a lot of things, amen, that are out of order. We got to get back in order. And so God is watching how we build, amen. He's involved in our building process. And so these are these seven pillars are, are essential support, reliable, essential support, amen, that's going to cause our lives to thrive in the things of God. Can you say amen? In second and Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 33, it says, for who is God except the Lord? I want to stop right there. Who is God except the Lord? The word God is not God's name, amen. It's not our Heavenly Father's name, amen. God, amen, is his title. The word God means supreme. Come on, somebody. It means supreme. Who is the highest except the Lord? Who is the Lord? The owner, the provider of the bread. That word Lord means owner. Amen. Who is the, who, who is the supreme one except the one who owns everything? Except the one who has everything. Except the one who has all power. Look at this. He says, for who is God except the Lord? Who but our God, our supreme one, is a solid rock. In other words, who, who else other than the supreme one, God, can be counted on? Who can, out of everything that's happened in our life, everything that's happened in your life, everything that has happened in our nation, who is only the solid rock? Who can be relied on when nothing else or no one else can? Who has the power to be uh, to sustain or be sustainable in these times? Nobody but God. Hallelujah. Our supreme one. He says, God, the supreme one, is my strong fortress, and he makes my way perfect. Y'all see that? He's the only one that can make our lives perfect. Why? Because he's almighty God. He has the ability. He has the power to do it. When things go awry in our life, I know we don't live perfect lives. Our life, when you look at our life, is not perfect. But there is hope. Amen. There is hope in God that he can perfect those things, according to scripture, which concerning us. Amen. Only God. And so we must, amen, glory to God. We must see God. That's my first point tonight. We must see God's power as supreme. Amen. Many things are vying in your life to be God. Many things in your life is vying to take the place of God, to get the attention that only God deserves, to get the honor that only God deserves. Even the enemy, he wants to be God. He got kicked out of heaven because he wanted to take God's place. And he didn't stop because he got kicked out of heaven. He still wants to be God. He wants to be God of your life. He wants to be supreme over your life. So he uses fear. Amen. He uses fear to startle you, to stunt you, to stop you, and, and, and catch your catch your undivided attention to where you're focusing your attention on the things that he's presenting to you. Amen. False evidence appearing real. Amen. He presents fear to you to get your attention, to get your allegiance, to get you to bow down and worship. But only our God, somebody say only our God, only our God has the power. He has the real power, the authentic power. There is nothing else, no one else but our God that has the true and living power. Can you say amen? And so we must see God's power as supreme, as believers. Amen. We cannot uh, play uh, 
the victim to anything, the things that comes up in our life and think God is going to deliver us. No, he's given us power. Amen. He's given us power. We must know that his power is available to us. But in order to trust in that power, you got to see that power as the supreme power out of all the powers in this world. You know, men got power. Amen. You call you, amen. We, we, we got white power. We got black power. We got political power. Amen. We got corporate power. We got business power. Come on, somebody. We got power in every mountain of influence, but it's only God's power that is supreme. We rely on a lot of stuff. We depend on a lot of things. Amen. We set our faith. We say we trust in God, but many times we set our faith on things, amen, that God did not bring into our lives. And so when those things don't work, we look to God. Well, God said, no, you, you use that. I didn't tell you to do that. You did that, and you wanted me to bless it. You saw somebody else use, and you thought it. Was, amen. This, this is the this is the word. This is this is God. We're gonna use this, whether it's strategies for your life or a situation where you have to get out. You're trying to get out of a predicament that's in your life, and you've seen other people do it. Amen. Amen. Or you've been trained. Amen. To get your hustle on, as it were. Amen. But when it don't work, you look to God and you say, God, I prayed. Yeah, God said you prayed, but you didn't get my answer. You didn't get my strategy. You came up with your own and, and assumed it was me that told you that. Well, really, it was your own mind that told you that. Come on, somebody. Listen, God's power is real. God's power is authentic. It doesn't need any substitute. Come on, somebody. It don't need any fakes, uh, 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 counterfeits. Come on, somebody. It don't need any additives. Hello, somebody. You don't have to add anything to God's power. God's power is supreme. And it's sufficient. And we must see God's power as supreme. Can you say amen? Let's look at another passage, amen, that confirms this. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, amen, in the Old Testament, amen. We, we started out in the Old Testament, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says these things, amen, in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, was written for our example, amen. So we must take heed, amen, to, to see and discover the heart of God concerning things. Notice in verse tw uh, verse 6 of, of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it says, And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly, glory to God, stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God our, of our fathers, are not you, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Somebody say all the kingdoms. He rules over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand, that word hand also has to do with authority. In your hand or your authority are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Jehoshaphat himself. Amen. Glory to God. Got a revelation of God's power. He experienced God's power. So he was able to say that with, with some conviction. Amen. Glory to God. He, he had experienced, excuse me, God's power. And he says, in your authority, in your hand, that which you possess is power and might. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Notice that even when Jesus was teaching us, uh, uh, his disciples to pray. Amen. He said, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Y'all see that? On earth as it is in heaven. It's God's kingdom. It's God's power. Amen. That, that, that rules over all other kingdoms. That rules over all other nations. And when we pray, we got to understand that. And glory to God. We ain't just praying to some anybody. We ain't praying to the president of the United States or, or, or some president or CEO of corporate America. Amen. We're not beseeching them. Amen. They, their power is limited. We're talking about almighty God that has all all power. Amen. He has all power. Any other power is beneath and inferior to his power. His power is supreme. So when you pray glory to God, to almighty God, you got to understand you're talking to the one that got all the power. Hello. Amen. You're crying out to the one that has all the power. And so we must see his power. I don't care what you're going through, what you are facing, what seems to be impossible. Amen. God has all all power. There is nothing impossible with God. Somebody said nothing. Look at that word nothing. No thing. No thing 
is impossible with God. And really, really that word thing, amen, when you study it out, it has to do with rhema. There is no rhema that's without potential. See, anything, any word that comes from God, when God gives you a rhema, y'all better catch that. When God gives you a rhema about your situation, listen, listen, you don't need to look for nothing else. That's it. Why? Because the potential and the power is in that rhema. That's what the word means. When Jesus said, nothing is impossible with God. No thing, no rhema, no revelatory word. Why? Because it comes, amen, already packed and loaded, amen, with the potential and the power of God. So that's why nothing is impossible. Come on, somebody. I don't care what situation you're in. If you'll get a rhema word from God, if you'll seek God for a word, all you need is a word. Because guess what? That power is coming with the word. We got to see God's power as supreme. Can you say amen? Job chapter 26, we run it. Job chapter 26, amen, verses 7 through 14, amen. I'll give you a few seconds and catch up with me. Amen. Job, amen, glory to God, understood God's power. Amen. Through his suffering, amen, through his trial, he still saw God's power. Amen. Notice in verse 7, amen, it says of chapter 26 of Job, it says, God stretches the northern sky over empty space. Who can do that? Stop right there. Who can stretch, watch this, the a sky over an empty space? He said, God stretches the northern sky over empty space. Now, you tell me. You tell me. See, we we just read over this stuff. We don't contemplate. We don't meditate on it to to uh, to see how powerful our God really is. Amen. God is not some fairy tale. Listen, He's your Father, but I need you to understand. Hey, how powerful your Father really is. Amen. He stretches the northern sky over empty space. Watch this, and hangs the earth on nothing. There's nothing holding up the earth. Amen. Nothing holding up the earth but the word of his power. That's what scripture tells us. He upholdeth all things. Why? How? By the word of his power. The power that comes from his word. Glory to God. Watch this. He wraps the rain. Mm, I love this. He wraps the rain in his thick clouds. And the clouds don't burst with the weight of it. You see that? See, he, it, the clouds, amen, I don't care what kind of science, what science tells you. See, science doesn't create. Science explains, amen. Science explains what already is, amen. See, he wrapped the God talking, amen. God wraps the rain in thick clouds. He holds it till he says it's time for you to be released. It's time to release. Come on, somebody, amen. And the clouds themselves, they don't say, uh-uh, I can't hold no more. I got to burst. No, it, they, God does that, amen. God holds the cloud. Y'all see that? He holds the rain in his thick clouds, and the clouds don't burst with the weight. He covers the face. Of the moon, shrouding it with his clouds. He created the horizon when he separated the waters. Think about this. The whole earth in creation. When he created the earth, the whole earth, amen, it was one set of waters. He filled the whole earth with water. And God separated the water and, and created the seas and, and then created the sky, the, created the atmosphere. Right there. He showed God did that. Who can do that? Satan can't do it. Angels can't do it. Demons can't do it. Come on. Amen. Created spirits can't do it. Humans can't do it. God. God has that kind of power. I need you to see this. We got to see God's power as supreme. I'm telling you, because I'm telling you, the devil is talking. The news media is talking. Politicism is raging. Uh, the Bible says, "How? why does the heathen rage? Why? I can tell you why he raged. And imagine a vain thing, because he's clueless. He's clueless. Amen. He done seen God's power, but he's clueless. Amen. Thinking that he's going to gain advantage of human beings like God is not going to show up for us. Come on, somebody. God has all power. Look at this. He says, watch this. The foundations of heaven tremble. They shudder at his rebuke. By his power, the sea grew calm. By his skill, he crushed the great sea monster. Glory to God. His spirit made the heavens beautiful, and his power pierced the gliding serpent. These are just the beginning. Y'all see that? These are just the beginning of all that he does. Merely a whisper of his power. In other words, you ain't seen nothing yet. 
if we'll just discover, amen, we just discover his power, amen, through looking at his creation, studying the Psalms and, and, and how the Psalm, the Psalmist explains, amen, and beautifies the creation, amen, that he has created. We, If we'll just take the time, it will build our confidence. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It'll build our faith, amen, in God, who he is. Oh, I know who God is. I know he got all power. You ain't, you ain't meditated on that like you need to. Amen. Because if you had, you wouldn't be fearing some things. Amen. In every era of your life, you'll have so much confidence because of your daddy, because of your heavenly father. Why? Not because one of it, one experience, but through meditation. Watch this. You can have all types of experiences. And when you meditate his word and meditate upon his goodness, meditate upon his power, how powerful he is. Look at this. Glory to God. He says, these are just the beginning of all that he does, merely a whisper of his power. Who then can comprehend, or understand, or grasp the thunder of his power? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Watch this. One more scripture. Amen. We'll move into our next point. Somebody said we got to see God's power. Amen. As supreme power. He is the highest power. He has the highest power. There is no other power that's greater than his. Glory to God. I'm setting you up for something. Glory to God. Psalm 71, verse 18. Amen. Psalm 71, verse 18. It says, now that I am old and gray. He says, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. You see that? See, he experienced, he saw the miracles. Amen. Those miracles were worked by his mighty power. He said, look here, I'm old and I'm gray. He said, but I don't need you to abandon me right now. Amen. Why? Because other folk need to see his power. This new generation that have not seen your power, God, let me proclaim it. Hallelujah. Let me proclaim your power. Why? Because we have to see the power of God. God put us in this earth, amen, to demonstrate his power. But in order to demonstrate his power, we first got to see it as supreme. Hallelujah. And stop relying on gimmicks. Stop relying on uh, 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 things that, that, you know, of the earth. Stop lying on, uh, relying on things that, that, that we come up with, with our own charisma, with our own ability. Amen. Man-made stuff. Uh -uh. Everything that God intended for Adam, amen, to do in this earth, he was to do it by the power of God. Amen. He was to do it by the power of God. There was, there was nothing in this earth, in this three-dimensional world that Adam was in charge of and was to cultivate and to guard and to keep. Come on, somebody. Amen. And to reproduce and to replenish. He was never to use anything of this earth. Everything was to come from that four-dimensional realm, the power of God. And we got to understand that. We keep trying to work out our problems. We keep praying, asking God to do something. Amen. But yet we are looking, we think we're looking to God, but we're really looking to uh, 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 physical manifestations produced by physical things, hoping that God worked them things out. No, we just need his power. Amen. He, we need his power. God's power can affect, affect anything in this earth. It's fourth dimensional, but guess what? It governs everything in this physical realm, including your body. Every cell, every membrane, every artery in your body. I don't care what kind of sickness, what kind of disease, amen, tries to attack your body. Amen. God's power is available. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we got to see his power as supreme. I'm telling you, we got to get this established in our life. It's going to cause our faith, amen, to skyrocket. Glory to God. Secondly, not only must we, amen, see God's power as supreme, we must show. Somebody say show. We must show that God shares his power. Amen. We must show that God shares his power. Glory to God. Amen. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Glory to God. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Amen. Verse 7. The Bible says that God, the supreme one, has not given us the, a spirit of fear or timidity. Amen. He, but uh, he's given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit of love. 
And he's given us a spirit of a sound mind or a self-disciplined mind. Glory to God. In other words, God has given us the spirit of power. He's given us an attitude of power. He's given us the anointing of power. Amen. And he's give, he gives us the mindset of power. Y'all got to catch that. I said he gives us an attitude of power. He's given us the anointing of power. And he gives us a mindset of power. We got to think power. Amen. We got to think the power of God. We got to keep conscious. Amen. At the forefront of our mind, the power of God. How am I going to get out the situation? The power of God. Hello, somebody. How am I going to feed the 5,000? The power of God. Come on, somebody. How am I going to do this? The power of God. Hallelujah. Everything that you see, everything that, that's created, everything that was made was not made if it wasn't made by him. By who? God. His word. The power. Everything that God made, he created by his power. Hallelujah. But see, watch this. What we got to understand that God shares his power. He shares it with us. It's right here in 2 Timothy. He says he's given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a self or sound mind. Can you self-discipline or a sound mind? So we got to show that power. We got to show that God shares his power. God doesn't hold all his power to himself. No, he, he created the earth. And he turned it over to the children of men. That's what scripture says. Amen. He turned it over to Adam. Amen. And all that were born after Adam. Glory to God. That includes you and me. Amen. He's given us power to overcome everything and have dominion in this earth. And we got to demonstrate that God has shared his power with us. Don't use your power. Your power is nothing. Don't try to use your power. I know you got some influence. Amen. Glory to God. But you have nothing that God did not give you. There's nothing that you have that God did not give you. You cannot brag. A person that brags on themselves all the time and talking about what they have and what they've done. Listen, you can't do nothing without, without God. If anything, you need to be bragging on God. Even Apostle Paul had to say, I am who I am by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the favor of God. Can you say amen? Let's look at Ephesians. Amen. Look at Ephesians. This is one of my favorite passages. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. Let's look at Ephesians. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Looking at verses 15 through 21. Amen. Amen. He says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That's the Apostle Paul talking. He says, I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Y'all see that? That the God, the supreme one of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes, he's praying this, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Why? That you may know or have a working knowledge of the hope or the purpose of his calling. And you may know or have a working knowledge or revelatory knowledge of the riches of the glory of his inheritance that's on the inside of us. Paul is praying this Holy Ghost prayer. He said, I'm praying that, you, that God enlighten your eyes, that he grant unto you the spirit, amen, the anointing, the attitude of wisdom, amen, his attitude, amen, of knowledge, amen, his attitude of understanding, glory to God, glory to God. Look at this. He says that you will know the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints is. Watch this. Hallelujah. And then he says, verse 18, I mean, excuse me, 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? Think about that. His power is always coming toward us as we avail and yield to the Spirit of God. He can release as much power, not only in us, but through us, as we avail ourselves to the Spirit of God and allow him to teach us the wisdom of God and the revelation of God. We have access to all the power that Jesus had access to. I'm going to let that sit right there for a moment. We have all access to all the power 
that Jesus has access to. Amen. Why? Because that was his will in the first place. Jesus came to be the sample son to show us what the co- what's in our covenant. To sh- he didn't just come to die for us. That wasn't the only he w- he came. Well, he could have just came and died. Uh-uh. He came and demonstrated. He showed forth his power. We'll see that in a minute. Amen. He showed forth his power. I'm getting ahead of myself. Amen. Glory to God. So we could see it and walk in it. Notice he says here, and what is the exceeding greatness? Notice that word exceeding. See, he it's exceeding greatness. Amen. It is just exceed one time. It, it's a continual thing. Amen. It's continuous, ongoing. It continues to exceed greatness. Amen. It's not just great power. Come on, somebody. It continues to exceed. Why? Because it's unlimited power. Hello, somebody. It's unlimited power. That's why Ephesians 3.20 says, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> now unto him. That is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. Look at all those adjectives. You see that? Exceeding abundantly above all. Exceeding abundantly above all. Exceeding abundantly. It exceeds abundant. It exceeds abundant power. It exceeds, think about that. It exceeds whatever you can fathom in your mind, what is abundant power, it exceeds it. Exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think or even imagine. See, God wants us to awaken, glory to God, our imagination. Why? Because his power, amen, it has no assignment, amen. And we're limited, we li- we're limited in our thinking, and we're limited, amen, in our uh, in our faith. Glory to God. His power, amen, is just sitting there dormant. It's sitting there dormant. God wants to release that power. What good is power if it's not being it's not being used? What good is power if it's not flowing? Come on, somebody. What good is power if it's active, not active? God wants to do exceeding abundantly above all. So look at this scripture again. He says, and he wants us to know this. He wants us to have a revelation of the power, this exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. There it is. Who believe. According on the scale or on the level, amen, or relative to the working of his mighty power. Y'all see that? The power that's in us that continues to be made available to us is not power from this earth. Hello, somebody. And there's some power in this earth. Amen. There's some energy, electrical power in this earth. Amen. But it's it's but it's 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 inferior to the power of God. Listen at this. He says, according to his the working of his mighty power, which he worked or wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He converged all of his power together. To raise Christ from the dead. That's resurrection power. That wasn't just no natural power. Amen. That wasn't no ordinary power. Matter of fact, that wasn't even, watch this, that wasn't even a, a, a feeding the 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread power. That was resurrection power. He said that same power that raised Christ from the dead is in us. That's right in scripture. It's in us. And so we got to understand God shares that power. And we have to glory to God. Hallelujah. We must show. Show to <coughs> excuse me. Show to ourselves. Show to the world. Because the world needs to see this power. Amen. The world needs to see the power on the church. Glory to God. And that brings me to my third point. Amen. 
Amen. Now, not only must we must show that God shares his power, we've now got to show forth God's power. Somebody say show forth. Amen. Yeah, it's time for the church to show forth his power. Matter of fact, your, your circumstances are screaming at you for God's power to show up. Amen. Your circumstances need God's power. You're calling on God. Amen. And guess what? God is saying, you got the power. He got you got the power. Now you can ask me for wisdom on how to use that power. Amen. But I've done everything I'm supposed to do. It's on you now. It's time for us to show forth the power of God. Can you say amen? Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 23. And like I said, Jesus came to demonstrate and show us, amen, what kind of power we can walk in. We can walk in God's power. We can operate in God's power. Come on, somebody. Amen. The miracle working power is on the inside of us. Everything that Jesus did, he still gave the glory to God. He said, hey, man, look, the word, the words that I speak, it's the Father that doeth the work. Amen. See, God works through his word. We speak his word. The power will go to work. God is working. Amen. But it's his mighty power that's working in us. Can you say amen? Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 23. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and thou, Capernaum, this, this one, uh, Capernaum was being judged along with <clears throat> uh, other cities. Amen. We just picked up at verse 23. You can go back and read the whole encounter. Amen. But just wanted to show you this and highlight this. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Y'all see that? I'm going to read it again so you can catch that. He says, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. I want you to catch that. What is he talking about? Judgment. The power of God, the mighty power of God, amen, God used it, glory to God, to judge Capernaum, to judge Sodom, glory to God. He says it would have remained until this day. If Sodom, watch this, if Sodom had obeyed God and done what God wanted to do and work his power instead of working that wicked power, all that wickedness was going on, he said it would still be remaining today. It would remain today. Look at this next one. Look at Matthew 13 and 54. I'm talking about the mighty works, the power of God. Matthew 13 and 54 says, And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? They know it didn't come, it wasn't, they know it didn't come from earth. Amen. It came from from God but he demonstrated it as a man he showed forth that power as a man we say well you know that was Jesus yeah it was Jesus but he was the son of man he acted as the son of man anointed with the power of God amen why so he can demonstrate to us as an example what we should look like walking in that power anointed by that power can you say amen Glory to God. Look at verse 58, same chapter of Matthew. He says, watch this, and he did not many mighty works there. Why? Because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. He could not show forth the power because they didn't believe. Bible says he did not many. Amen. Which means only a few folk were believing. And those that believed got to see it. Look at this next verse. Point, point taken right here in John chapter 11. Amen. John chapter 11, verse 40. Amen. Talking about showing forth the works of God, showing forth the mighty power of God. He, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest what? Believe. If thou wouldest believe, thou should see what? The glory of God, the power of God. Amen. The power of God is being shown forth unto those that will believe. Not just believe in it, believe for it. Amen. The Bible said the devils believe and they tremble, but they ain't going to obey God. Amen. They're not going to flow, excuse me, in the things of God. 
Why? Because you got to believe for it. Amen. You got to believe for it. In other words, amen, when you believe in something, amen, you believe in something strong enough, guess what? There's some doing that comes with it. Amen. There's some doing that comes with it. I never would have sat in this chair, amen, glory to God, if I didn't believe, amen, if I didn't strongly believe, amen, that this chair will hold me up. Now, that's natural faith. Why? Because the evidence, amen, is natural. I see four legs holding this chair up. But what about when you don't have any natural evidence? What about when you don't have any natural evidence? Yo, the word of God becomes, amen, the four legs on these chairs. Go, glory to God. I hope you catch that. The word of God is all the evidence you need. It's the title deed. It's the proof that you need. Glory to God that God's word is true. Amen. That I can use his power. Notice he says here, he could do no mighty works only because they didn't believe. The power, the accessibility of God's power starts with your faith. Amen. It's not just believing in, it's believing for it. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's finish up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Look at this. What are we talking about? Amen. Showing forth his power. So it takes us believing to show forth his power. But not only that, it takes the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said it takes the anointing of the Holy Ghost to show forth his power. Can you say amen? Look at Acts chapter 1. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Glory to God. Mm. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Hallelujah. He says, but you shall receive power. He didn't say they shall receive power. Everybody else should see power. Just the apostles shall receive power. Amen. Just the preacher should receive power. The missionary should see power. No, he says you. He's talking to believers. He says, but you shall receive power when? After that, the Holy Ghost. It's come upon you. See, to anoint means to rub off on, to rub on, amen, to smear, amen. The Holy Ghost that's in us when he comes up on us, he comes to anoint us with the power of God. Can you say amen? He says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Watch this. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, be careful. Understand that word witness has nothing to do with you testifying. Has nothing to do with you going and witnessing for Christ. Now, the Holy Ghost will give you power to do all that. Watch this. But the word witness here in the Greek has to do with testimony. He said, you shall be a testimony. Your life shall be a testimony. You shall show forth the power of God as a testimony when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and anoints you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have access to the, to the Holy Ghost 24-7. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He says, you will be a testimony unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, unto the uh, uttermost part of the earth. Glory to God. Somebody said, I need to get anointed. Amen. There's a fresh anointing always available. Amen. There's always a fresh anointing in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You just need to learn to get in the presence of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, we got to learn and understand that this pillar, the force of God, the power of God, must be established in our life. It's essential. Hallelujah. It's essential, glory to God, that we build our life, we build our ministries, amen, upon these seven pillars, including this one we are talking tonight, talking about tonight, the force, the power of God. We build our life, we build our confidence, amen. We build everything, amen, by the power of God. We do everything by the power of God. We take dominion by the power of God. I'm almost through here. Luke, Luke 10, 19, last scripture, last scripture. Last scripture, Luke 10 and 19. Glory to God. He says, behold, look, observe, check it out. Jesus talking. He says, I give you power to tread upon serpents 
and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, I'm giving you authority and I'm giving you this dunamis power. Come on, somebody. We got to have both. We got to have the exousia, that's the authority of power of God, and we got to have that dunamis power. Somebody say that dunamis power. Amen. See, it's no good to have authority if you ain't got no power to back it up. Amen. You can have authority. Barney Five, I said this before. Barney Five had the exousia. He he was deputized by Andy Griffith. Come on, somebody. Amen. He had the authority. Amen. Glory to God. But guess what? He didn't have no confidence. He had a gun in his in his holster. Amen. He couldn't, he was so nervous, so fearful, couldn't use it. Amen. I remember one episode he pulled it out and, and got to shake it. What's happening? He don't understand the power. He's not familiar with the power. He had not exercised the power. And so when it came time for him to exercise, he was, he got the fumbling. He got so bad that Andy had to take all his bullets out of his gun before he killed somebody, killed somebody, including himself. And was, they were singing that song, Oh, my Barney, oh, my Barney, had a jail and couldn't lock it, had one bullet for his pistol, I had to keep it in his pocket. Why? He did not familiarize himself Amen. With the power that backed up his authority. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what the church looked like sometimes. Amen. We just fumbling and bumbling and going through and, and losing and losing battles after battles, all because we won't take our dominion, we won't, we won't take our authority and begin to use that power and enforce those rebukes on the devil. Come on, somebody. You Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power to do what? Tread on serpents. Tread on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. When the when enemy brings fear, guess what? You got power over that. When the enemy brings sickness and disease, you got power over that. When the enemy brings poverty and lack and insufficiency, you got power over that. God said, Jesus said, stop crying to me. Use what you got. Glory to God. That's a sermon in itself. Use what you got. Hallelujah. You got power. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we got to learn to, amen, establish, amen, this pillar in our life. We got to be people of power. Amen. We got, just can't quote the scriptures and talk about how much power we got and not demonstrate it. Hello, somebody. It's demonstration time. Glory to God. You got problems in your life. Guess what? You got power to, to resolve those problems. There's an anointing to resolve that problem. Glory to God. There's an anointing for everything. Jesus said, I, I've come, amen, I've come, amen, glory to God, to, to destroy the works of the devil. With what? The power of God. The devil been messing with you. He's been working in your life. You got the power to destroy it. Hallelujah. But you got to use your power. You got to become established in your power. Glory to God. I'm getting, I'm getting excited. Glory to God. I think I'm going to send myself an offering. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen. We are people of God. We, we, what shows the world, amen, that we're really people of God is that we walk in the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But in order to walk in it, we must see that it is supreme itself. The power of God is supreme. And we got to understand, we got to show, amen, that this power, amen, God didn't keep it locked up. Glory to God. He shared it, amen, with us. And we got to share it with believers. We got to share it with the gener generation that's coming behind us. Glory to God. Because what? Church has become boring to them. They want to see some demonstration. They want to see some power. Amen. Glory to God. They want to see some excitement. They want to see more than just them put, picking them up and putting them down. Glory to God. This God that you talk about, glory to God. I want to see him change my situation. Can he deliver me from drugs and alcohol? Can he deliver me from sexual promiscuity? Can he deliver me? Hallelujah. Where well, I'm going to find that power if the church don't demonstrate it, if the church don't show forth the power of God. We have to. While, as a matter of fact, this pandemic and all the things that are going on, glory to God, it's 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 showing us up. Amen. It's showing us up. Matter of fact, glory to God. When you look around, amen. I ain't talking about just churches closing the doors. I'm talking about the saints. Amen. Glory to God. When you ain't at church, we don't be at church seven days a week anyway. Glory to God. What you doing Monday through Friday? Amen. That's showing up. What kind of power are you walking in? Hallelujah. You ain't blame because you can't go to church. You can go to church. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But Lord, Lord Jesus, listen, people of God, it's time for us to walk in the power. 
Amen. It's time for us to walk in the power. It's time for us to demonstrate the power. We got to endeavor, amen, to establish all seven of these anointings, these seven pillars. God is watching, amen, how we rebuild and build back and build, amen, build back better and all these things in this season, looking at our lives, looking at our family, looking at our household, look at, looking at our financial house, looking at our faith, amen. All these things have to be constructed, Amen. Jesus is the foundation. Amen. But we got to, listen, we got to understand how we build our lives on that foundation. I can have the best foundation in the world, but if I go and take some hay or some stubble, amen, and, and try to establish them as the pillars for the structure that I'm building, how many know that hay and stubble, amen, is going to burn? These fiery trials that's coming up on our lives and that we're dealing with, I'm telling you, it's all types of warfare, amen. And God said it, this would be, amen, a time of war, amen. It's not just Ukraine and Russia, amen. This spiritual war is coming in all types of facets. And we can't respond in the flesh. Why? Because responding in the flesh is equivalent to building a structure with hay and stubble. We have to respond in the spirit. We got to use these seven pillars, amen, glory to God, to build our life, to build our ministry, to build our relationships with glory to God. Why? So they can hold and be a support, amen, as we go through these times, these troubling times, these perilous times. Can you say amen? And so we got to get these things established in our life. And you don't establish a, th establish a thing through one encounter or one experience or one message. Come on, somebody. It's repetition. Amen. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. That's how you get established in the Word of God. That's how you're going to establish these seven pillars in your life. Can you say amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, bless the Lord, saints. Amen. Thank you, amen, for being an awesome class, an awesome audience tonight. I just need you to do one thing with me. Amen. Glory to God. Let's make the connection tonight. Let's sow this word, sow into this word, glory to God, that God is released from heaven. Amen. This was a word from heaven, glory to God. I couldn't even get all this in my notes. Amen. Glory to God. God is awesome. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen. So tonight, amen, this is an opportunity to, to increase, amen, and complete this transaction, what heaven has released into your life. Amen. You sow back, amen, into the ministry, into this word tonight, amen, to complete this transaction. Glory to God. That's a spiritual principle that we have to understand. Amen. Now, right there on your screen, you have several ways you can give. Amen. You can give by, amen, cash app. That's uh, dollar sign, royal priesthood. LR. You can give by Givelify. That's Royal Priesthood. Uh, that's uh, Givelify as well as Venmo. That's the at sign Royal Priesthood LR. And you can make your checks or money orders out uh, to uh, uh, Royal Priesthood Ministries or RPM uh, PO Box one six 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 three three, Little Rock, Arkansas seven two two one six. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just sense the power of God in this place right now. Hallelujah. I just sense the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sense the power of God wants to flow tonight. Let it flow, first of all, in your finances as you make, amen, uh, uh, make a way for God to bless you through your seed sowing. Amen. Glory to God. But then there's, a, there's somebody here. Amen. Amen. Just need to touch a power of the power of God in their life. Say, so God, I, 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 just, I just need a touch from you. I just need to know that you, you have my back. I need to know that you see my situation and, and, and that you care about it. I need a touch. I need experience your power. Saints, pray with me. Glory to God. Continue to give, continue to sow, but be in faith with me. Glory to God. I see a young lady right now. God, I just need your power. I need your power right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my sister right now. That your mighty hand, God is stretching forth even now to touch and comfort and encourage. And not only that, but God, to empower her to rise up. 
to cause her faith to rise up. God, cause her faith to catch fire now in the name of Jesus. That come hell or high water, she's going to believe you for that miracle. She's going to believe you for that touch. She's going to believe you for that turnaround. I declare it so in the name of Jesus. And I silence the clamor that's in going on in your mind, that's going on in your head. In the name of you, Jesus, Yeshua. There's several of you right now that's having mind battles. You, 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 you've, you've, you've experienced some, some mental attacks. And God said, Shalom. I've given you a sound, disciplined mind. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We cast down every thought, every imagination, everything that exalts itself against the will of God and the knowledge of God in my sister and even in my brother's life. I declare it so now in Jesus' name. We silence the enemy in Jesus' name. You foul, unclean spirit, take your hands off God's property now. And we declare, we declare shalom over every thought. Every renegade thought, we silence it now in the name of Jesus. And I declare, you think the thoughts of God. Your thoughts are lovely. Your thoughts are pure. Your thoughts are holy. Your thoughts are righteous. Your thoughts are good. Your thoughts are hopeful in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the name of the Lord, saints. Bless the name of the Lord. We're going to get out of here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I decree a divine turnaround. For all of those that need a divine turnaround. You got situations going on in your life. Some of, the, some of them are financial. Some of them are relational. Even some that are career-wise. That's what I hear. Glory to God. God said, I'm, I'm declaring a divine turnaround tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. He says, glory to God, free yourself. Cast all the care upon him and free yourself. He says, because I'm working it out. I'm working it out. There's a divine shift, a divine turnaround that's happening for you right now. Glory to God. And you just, your step of faith is to cast the care. That's it. That's your step of faith. Amen. To cast the care. And don't pick it back up again. Said the Spirit of the Lord. Glory to God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm trying to turn this thing loose. Glory to God. There's an Andre. Amen. There's an Andre. Glory to God. I see it's kind of like a, a, a red mark starting at the front of your forehead going towards the back. But God said, that's a, that's a migraine headache. God said, I'm healing that right now in the name of Jesus. You've been stressed out. You've been worried. You've been even frustrated. You've been frustrated. And that this agitation has caused these headaches. You say, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not, I'm not where I should be in life. God said, don't worry about that. If you'll trust me with your life and you'll trust me with your future, he said, I got that taken care of and I'll direct your path. If you'll just acknowledge me, I'll direct your path. You're frustrated because you're trying to work it out. You're trying to come up with your own plan. God said, no, I got that. I created you. I made you. And if you surrender to me, if you'll just surrender it to me, all of it, you and all of your issue, if you'll surrender it to me, God said, not only will you not only not ever have that headache again, glory to God, but he said, but I'll put you on the path to success. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord, saints. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go here. Glory to God. But just let the power of God flow. Let the power of God flow. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is healing hearts now. Thank you, Jesus. He's healing physical hearts. He's healing your spiritual heart. I'm talking about your soul. You've been emotionally wounded. Hallelujah. But God is healing that. See, God is sorting out some things in your life. And some things and some people that you've been holding on to that you even set your faith for. 
Uh, but that wasn't the will of God. That wasn't the will of God. God said, let that go. Let him go. Let her go. Glory to God. Let it go. Let him go. Let her go. Let it go. Let him go. Let her go now. Now. Now, said the Spirit of God. Glory to God. There it is. Hallelujah. There it is. Glory to God. Look at the anointing. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. I saw that. I saw the release. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You release the power of God on your situation tonight. You speak to your situation. What thus said the Lord. Whatever the Lord has said about you. Whatever he said about your situation, glory to God. You release the power of God through releasing his words. See, when you release his words, he doeth the work. That's what Jesus said. When you release his words, he doeth the work. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in in God and watch God do the work move in faith let faith affect your emotions I'm speaking by the spirit of God now let let faith infuse your thought life so you can't be in faith and your thoughts are running everywhere uh uh the renewed mind aligns you with the will of God. And faith is expressed, born out of the spirit, but expressed through the soul. But the engineer of the soul is your mind. Cut off every renegade thought right now in the name of Jesus with your words. Begin to cast down every thought, every imagination, every high thing that's exalting itself against the will of God, against the knowledge of God. Kill those renegade thoughts, said the Spirit of God. Have faith in God. And God is changing your situation even as I speak now. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For some of you, those things, I spoke to the gentleman about things frustrated, but some of you are agitated and frustrated about some small things, some medium things, and some large things. It's a spirit of vexation that's been released against the people of God, this part of this warfare. Listen, listen. God's rescue plan is for you to use your power. I said God's rescue plan is for you to use your power. Use your power tonight. Use your power tonight. Hallelujah. Use the power. It's the power of God. Amen. It's sufficient. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Whatever anointing you need is sufficient. Hallelujah. However you need that power to manifest it, itself, it's sufficient. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to leave, leave with that, with that anointing. Amen. Lift your hands before the Lord. Amen. I'm out of time. And I surely thank God for yours. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Obey God tonight. Don't forget to sow. Don't forget to sow. Amen. Don't, don't receive from heaven and you not respond from heaven the proper way. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands before the Lord. Father God, I bless the people of God. I declare shalom over their lives. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. This is the, your will. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. Jesus came and said, peace on earth. Goodwill to all men. Shalom. I released the wholeness of God over your situation, over your life now. In the name of Jesus. I declare that the favor of God is on you. The favor of God surrounds you. The favor of God follows after you. And the favor of God shows up for you every time. In Jesus' mighty majestic name. God bless you. We love you. Go take dominion.